Hey, welcome back to Off the Grid with Bert. So today we're converting diesel burners to run on waste oil. Um, now this unit's a, oh, I reckon a 1940s, 1950s Gilbarco burner. Um, there's the back plate for it there. Alright. Made in Canada. Nice quality little unit. Um, this one's got a door flange mount, so you can mount it to your boiler. It's got a quarter horsepower electric motor, ignition transformer. Um, now this is the business end here, so what we're doing, I'll just pull the snout out gently. So what we've done is we've pulled the original nozzle out and then we've inserted a siphon nozzle. It's got a 1.5 millimeter jet in it. The existing oil line for the burner will become our air line, which will start just there. And then our fuel line will come in from the back. And we've got an olive fitting here uh, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use this yet. Uh, it's a weird size. It's not quarter inch. It's uh, I think it's five eighth. Um, or inch and an eighth. Sorry. Uh, yeah, one eighth, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird size anyway. Um, but yeah, that'll go in the top there. And then the oil line will simply run, as you can see here on the back, there's our oil line, insulated. Um... Now, when you're running a single nozzle, um, it's always good to insulate as much as you can uh, with your oil line. Um, you could even apply a bit of insulation around the nozzle here to sort of help keep the heat in because as the air is passing from the combustion blower, you will get a bit of a cooling effect. Um, now, these old burners used a slightly different method for turbulation of the air to get the spin on it to help with uh, atomization. Instead of using a fine um, perforated disc, they used these larger um, setups. And then when the air gets to the end, it's forced into a smaller opening, which accelerates it even further. Um, now we've bought an ignition control out from China um yet to see how these go these are designed for waste oil uh made by wee t weird name um but it's basically a copy of the danfoss unit fairly much the same it's actually closer in design to um a siemens controller so there's a siemens controller there on another waste oil conversion Gilbarco, that's even older that one. Uh, we've got a few of them sitting around here that have got to be all converted over. Another one there under the bench. I think they're all new way burners, those ones. But yeah, this one is going to go on my steam boiler uh, once I get it back here to the workshop for working on it. Um, but yeah, with a 1.5 mil nozzle in there, uh, it should give us plenty of heat. Um, if it needs a bigger one, I've got some larger nozzles. Um, the original controller used to sit here, but it's a um, old school uh, Honeywell controller. It's all fully manual with relays and stuff like that. Um, they're good, but they do require adjustments from time to time. Uh, there's little screws and things there that, you know, you've got to fine tune things up. It works, but it's not really suitable for the waste oil because um, these controllers have got outputs for um, controlling valves. Um, it's also got the, the all important uh, 10 to 15 second air purge, which you need on a, on a boiler. Uh, whereas there's no purge on those old controllers. 
Apologies for the bench, it's a pigsty, isn't it? <laughs> That's how we work here. We just everything comes out, and then once a month we have a nice big clean up. Anyway, this will be our air solenoid, and that will go straight on there. And then we'll put an air regulator on the back. I've actually got a mount there for one of those already. And yeah, it's a nice little burner, this one. It's very compact, um, so it'll fit into a small space. It doesn't protrude back. Um, the fact it's got a flange mount is awesome. That means you can mount it on your door and you don't need to sit it on a pole. Uh, some of these burners actually sat on a pedestal and then they just stuck them into the door or the, the boiler or whatever. Um, whereas this one's got a nice flange, which is gonna make things easy. Um, nice short little combustion tube on there. Um, there's a few more details hiding in there. So it shows the different firing rates with a specific nozzle diameter. We'll be ignoring that because we're going with waste oil. It's all controlled with your air pressure and the size of the orifice in the jet. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be a nice little setup. Got the original CAD cell there, but that's coming out. We'll mount the new one on there. Um, yeah. Anyway, there'll be a part two and a part three and a part four, most likely, uh, getting all the way up to mounting it on the boiler. Uh, the boiler that we've got coming is a 10 horsepower, I think. Um, high efficiency steam boiler with a built-in superheater, so that's gonna be good. Um, old school, it's a semi-riveted slash welded design. Um, I don't have any pictures of it at the minute, but uh, yeah, we'll get, uh, we'll get that um, all on video once, once we get it to where we're gonna work on it. It's either gonna be here or it'll be down at the Melbourne Steam Traction Engine Club, one of the two, probably down the Traction Engine Club because there's a wealth of knowledge in that place uh, when it comes to steam and it's gonna be great for sort of getting pointers on, uh, you know, safety, putting uh, sight glasses and stuff like that on the boiler. Um, and the other two items that we've got coming with the boiler are two steam engines. We've got a Soho um, and that's a horizontal, bo uh, steam engine mounts on a pedestal or whatever or top of a bench whatever you want to put it on and then we've also got a tangy vertical steam engine six horsepower um, coming as well uh, one of the guys at the clubs sold those to me and done me probably the sweetest deal of the century um, not going to go into details about what we paid for them but uh yeah, it's, it's, it's the bargain of the century. And um, yeah, I'm very appreciative of him giving me such a, an awesome price on these items because, um, you know, if you were to buy those, normally you'd be up for probably 30 or 40 grand or something like that. Um, as you know, all steam equipment is becoming coveted now, especially in Australia. Um, so yeah, anything steam, you're paying top dollar for it. So um if you see a steam item cheap, grab it, because it's always going to appreciate in value. Um, all right, that's it for this video. Um, if you've got any questions, chuck them down in the comments. Um, yeah, once once we go through a few more details of how we're going to get this oil and air set up here, it's yeah, it's pretty straightforward with these, um, these burners converting them over. Um, yeah, so... If you've got like an old um, diesel burner on a heater or something, and you you know you wanna you wanna save some serious money on your heating bills, if you can get that burner, pull it out, and then modify it, what, like what we're doing here with a, a siphon nozzle. Um, all you need is an air, a small air compressor. Um, you've got to preheat the oil before it goes into the nozzle, so you need a small tank. Um, which is open to atmosphere with a, an element in it. And then you control the element with a temperature control. You can get those off of old ovens and stuff like that. Um, we find the ideal temperature to run uh, waste oil is about 120 degrees Celsius. 
Um, seems to be good for a good range of oils. Anything really, really thick, you might need to go a bit higher on the temperature, but yeah, we'll uh, show you as this one progresses. We'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.